sorry I had to duck out. Um, I thought my chicken was. I've I've got chicken in the oven, and I thought oh. it was going. Uh, it was going a bit smoky in here, and I was like, Christ. Um, <laughs> Don't burn I down the to, house. Yeah, I was like, that'd be the worst interview ever. <laughs> It'd be hilarious. Oh my gosh. I um, there was one time where I was making coffee, and yeah. uh, I have a a furnace stove, right? So there's there's fire on there, and I left yeah. it on there for about an hour, and then I started smelling plastic. I was like, what the heck is that? Mm. And then my wife was like yelling, it's like, are you making coffee? And I was like, oh, shoot. So I ran over <laughs> there and I saw the my whole kettle was on fire. Oh, my God. It was crazy. The kettle, the metal part was fine. It was it was very hot. But the handle yeah. was uh, like uh, some kind of polyurethane or plastic or something. And oh that whole God. thing was burning. Jeez. I was like, oh, my gosh. So yeah. oh. I almost burned down oh. my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. You, you, you do something and then you forget about it. It's like. Yeah. Nightmare. Working from home, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Today, I'm very lucky to be joined by Matthew and Sina. Welcome, Matthew. Hey, so good to be here, Francesco. Whereabouts in the world are you joining us from? I am in sunny Los Angeles here out in California in the United States. Oh, sounds lovely. It looks lovely and bright there, which is good news uh, for the weather. <laughs> no, it's actually pretty gloomy outside, but I got this nice light right here, my production light. So it, it, it looks nicer than it actually is right now. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, as I said, the UK, literally, it just it's awful in the evening because it's like an apartment and it's like, I look like I'm, I don't know, not somewhere where good lighting is at all. <laughs> it's the evening. It's forgivable. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, you are, you're quite the, uh, the, the designer. Um, you've been working uh, for quite a long time with Blind, uh, the design agency. Uh, and mm -hmm. also a lot of your work now is with uh, the channel, the future, obviously. It's not just the channel. It's quite expansive. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe you want to give a bit of an introduction for those who are maybe new sure. to the future. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Matthew Encina. Uh, I've been a creative professional now for 15 years. Uh, for the longest time, we've been running a company, like you said, uh, Blind, where we've been doing brand strategy, motion design, uh, mostly working in the advertising and branding space. So we've been doing that for uh, many years. Now that company has been open since 1995. And uh, for the past five years, we've also been running a second company called The Future. And that is an education content platform where we teach creative entrepreneurship. So we teach creatives how to level up in the world, uh, how to charge more money, how to value themselves more, how to be valuable to others so that you guys as creatives can go out there and continue to do the things that you love and earn a living off of that. So that's the bulk of what we do. Uh, the things that we have out there mostly, we're known mostly for our YouTube channel um, where you can look us up at the future is here. There's no E for the future. Um, and you'll, you'll find we have a few hundred videos on there. We also have a second channel called the future Academy. So most of our content is just free out there. The rest of the stuff we do is workshops. We have a few paid courses and a bunch of miscellaneous other things that we are exploring this year and in the future. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the channel itself is like for myself and has helped me massively um, especially with the like, like I've, I've do fifty percent sort of this YouTube and fifty percent freelancing, and and mm -hmm. it was the sort of price negotiation that I was struggling with like about a year ago, and now I've slowly mastered into it. So, uh, oh, awesome! Such, such a great channel. Um, so <laughs> kudos to you guys. Um, you should come and, on the show and do a role play with Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'd probably suck it, suck when I'm in that situation. <laughs> it would be, be good. fun to watch. <laughs> it would be, yeah. And um, I think I saw, I think that's when I saw one of your videos as well a couple of weeks ago. It must have been mm. about a couple of months ago, actually, when you did your sort of tour of a couple of productivity apps that you liked and obviously mm -hmm. Notion came up, um, a, big, a big player in the space right now. Um, yes. Obviously, how are you using Notion at the moment? Uh, what's your sort of day-to-day -day use of the, the the application yeah so notion has been something that has taken over everything that I do personally in my life and has taken over everything that we do at the future so for the past couple of years our project management stack was you know we're using team Gantt Trello for many years we explored a little bit with monday.com um, uh, we did a little bit of base camp but I never really liked that uh, and those were our primary tools and then 
last year, one of our interns came in and he's like, oh, you should check out this thing called Notion. And he was documenting his entire internship process, like everything that he learned, all these cool resources that he found that he sent that to us at the end of his internship. I was like, what the heck? First of all, that's Leo. He's a rock star because he's, he's, he's such a nerd like that, but I love it because he's so thorough with everything that he does. So he introduced us to this whole document that was in Notion. I looked at it and I was like, what the hell? Like there's, what is this thing? It's, it's so complex. That was my first impression of it. It's like so dense. There's all these things in here. I don't know how to use it. It looks like a Wikipedia page. And then finally, my other coworker, uh, Ben Burns, he's like, oh, you should look into Notion. Leo turned me on to it. So I was like, okay, two people said it was good. I'm going to look into it. <laughs> so after just spending about 24 hours with it, I realized the power. After going through a couple of the templates, I realized, wow, you can do anything in here. It has all these features that you know we, we like from calendar apps, from the Trello uh, Kanban boards, uh, in terms of just documenting uh, processes. Like These are all things that were... Uh, kind of in different places in the past for us. Now we were able to move them all into one place using a tool like Notion. So for me personally, uh, the things that I use it for are to keep track of my weekly to-dos. I write a lot of my content like script writing for the videos that we make. Uh, I keep track of any projects that we have going on. And this is also a database where we do training for our team. So those are the primary uses that we use it right now, but obviously there's a lot of little things in between the cracks and new things we'll be using for in the future. But mostly it's just putting it all the information in one place and then keeping track of everything. That's amazing. Uh, I, that's a, a really good story about the intern as well, because obviously <laughs> like that, that's like such a wild situation. Um, and obviously you've been using it for a, a little bit of time now. Um, mm -hmm. What, what, just out of curiosity, what applications were you using before to manage like a to-do list and things like that? Was it just those team tools or did you have- Yeah, mostly the team tools. Like uh, Trello I was using for the longest time. I still use Trello here and there for, for tracking certain things. I don't use it much anymore ever since I got introduced to Notion, but Trello was the number one tool to keep track of the to-dos and, and the progress of things. So that was my go-to. And I, I used uh, on my phone, I used a Todoist for a little bit. Um, mm. but you know, I, 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 I've been constantly trying to consolidate because if I have to go to too many places, I have to figure out how things sync up and I hate doing that. It's like, I'd rather have one solution for everything. Yeah. And as long as it's pretty good at, uh, each of these things, cause Notion's not perfect, by the way, Notion's not perfect. There's, there's things, there's plenty of room for improvement, but I could see them constantly working on it, but it does most like 95% of the stuff that I needed to do. So that's why I've consolidated there. That's it. I think it's a good decision. And um, you're going to kindly give us a, a tour of your Notion account. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll pass over to yourself. <laughs> okay, great. Let me do a screen share so you can see. And then feel free to ask any questions along the way. So I'm doing a screen share here. Can you see my Notion doc? I can, yeah. Got my glasses okay. on now as well. Okay, so I know this looks a little messy here, but this is because there's a, there's a lot of things going on, right? So on the top left right here is just the favorites. These are all the things that I'm currently working on. I like to star all the things that are kind of active on my mind in terms of projects or things I need to access very quickly. Uh, right below that is the workspace for the future. So this is broken up into a couple different areas. Video content is where I'll primarily focus some time on. This is where my video team goes. Uh, sponsorships is where I track a lot of the sponsorship stuff that we're going. We need to blur this out right here. Um, then there's different workspaces for marketing, what we're doing for marketing, uh, the development of our courses and products that we have going on, um, content on the social side. Uh, we're working on our website over here. So just here's our Kanban board, some internal stuff for the future events and then some B2B stuff. So we have a little workspace broken out for each of kind of like the different silos or different uh, initiatives or groups within our company. And uh, we break it up that way. For, for me personally, I also have this uh, weekly to-do log, which this is just based off of one of Notion's templates. Once I opened their to -do, weekly to-do list, I just started using it and I love it. So I just duplicate this every week. And you can see this is my Monday through Friday. 
of what uh, I'm going to do. Sometimes there's a little bit of weekend work. And as I'm going through the week, I'm just clicking things off. As you can see, I didn't finish everything that I have to do this week, but you know, that's not a, that big of a deal. For me, sometimes things get pushed around and that's why I duplicate this and move it on to the next week and make sure I tackle that. Anything that's in bold, those are things that are very important. So as you can see, I'm a little delinquent in reviewing Alex's work over here and then updating our sponsor deck for events. So there's a lot of things that are in the queue for, for Friday here that are all bolded. So it's, it's a little crazy. Today's a little crazy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to accomplish all of this. I know realistically I could probably only accomplish two to three things max and do them very well and effectively. So that's how I track my week to week. Anything that does not get finished in this week, it does carry over to the following week. I really like that. It's, I, I like the simplicity of it as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, and then, like I said, the, there's a big archive. So these are all of my weeks from 2018. So you can see every week <laughs> I keep track of everything. In case I ever needed to go back and see what the heck was I doing on that day. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that's my weekly log. That's how I use it personally. But, you know, this is a mix of both mostly work and a little bit of personal stuff in there. Um, going into video content where I think your audience might get the most um, benefit from. One thing that you'll know about us at the future, we create tons and tons of video content. We release about uh, five pieces of video content a week on our channels. So there's a lot of stuff that we have to go through. I'm currently working with five editors. There's been more in the past and I'm probably going to hire some more in the very near future. So our team gets very big. And as you'll know, as a, to be an effective manager, you could probably only manage five people max. So the more people you go beyond that, the more you lose your uh, power or more you lose your effectiveness rather as a manager. So for me, I need some place, some kind of tool that's going to help me consolidate everybody, help me corral everybody and help me save time. Because if I'm constantly working and training all of these editors as they come in, it becomes a very uh, big task for me and I get nothing done. Right? I'm only spending time managing and not making or working on emails or relationships that are more important things that I should be doing. So as you'll see in our video content, there's a couple of different sections. The first one is training. So this one just shows you how you would use the workspace. So I, what I had my team do, after I trained them, I said, okay, now you guys train each other. And the reason why I did that is because um, First of all, I wanted to save my time, right? I was tired of explaining the same thing over and over again. But one thing that we know as being an education company, if you look at the retention period, uh, pyramid rather, uh, basically on the styles of learning, uh, at the very top is active learning. And at the very bottom is passive learning. So if I'm just, if you're watching or listening to a lecture, you're probably only going to absorb about 10% of that information. As you move up that period, when you go to active learning, you know, if you're, if you're doing practice or worksheets, like the, then your retention of that information goes up to 60%, 70%. At the highest, to retain 90% of that information is teaching. And when you teach a concept, when you teach something, then you retain that information. So that was a very long answer to say that the reason why I have my staff train each other is because they become masters of the same ideas, the same content, and it saves me a ton of time. So by doing that, uh, they've actually recorded all the steps. It's really smart. Can you hear the audio? Uh, no, but no. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Basically it's a uh, Mark. He's one of my leads over uh, one of my lead editors. Uh, he recorded this. So he's talking over that. It's like, Hey, welcome to the workspace. Here's how you use notion. Yeah. So there's, it's, it's, it's self-sustaining. And so he has a couple of training videos in there. So this just helps us with uh, onboarding new, uh, new team members. So it, it's, they just jump into here and they're going to know how to use Notion. Then we have other bits of training. Uh, since we've moved our whole team onto Dropbox, there's a whole other video here on how we would work on there and how you use the folder structure there. It's really good you're using it as this internal wiki to teach processes just to save everyone time. It's a really good idea. 
Exactly. And this is something that we try to teach other people too, where a lot of people feel like, you know, I don't have enough time in the day. Uh, all I'm doing is managing my team and, and I barely get enough time to look and review the work or, or do new business development. And these are ways that you could save time. The more you could look at what you do every day and the more you can systematize that and turn that into a clear process that's repeatable, the more time you're going to save and the more you can empower your team to train each other, teach each other, the more time you're going to save. So these are ways to buy back hours so that you as the most important person or one of the most important people in your organization might have more time to focus on the important things that are going to uh, have significant change for the, the company you work for. That is really good advice. I, I think I need to be doing something like this for our team um, just to save time because I think it'll be invaluable really. So thank you. That's good advice. Yeah. So as we're moving down this video content, there's this guidelines section. Basically, uh, me as being the, the chief content officer over at the future, I got to make sure that everything that goes out meets our standards. So I wrote a bunch of these documents. So I have a creative checklist, meaning when you make a video, it has to do these things. It has to have a clear goal. It has to be told very clearly, giving us enough context. Uh, you have to do it by teaching, you know, three to five things essentially of what the clear takeaways are. Um, wherever possible, you need to edit down and supplement the information because sometimes we have these hour long conversations that need to be turned into a five minute video. So sometimes that requires a little supplementary, either visual or a title card or something to help our audience understand. So I don't make sure that the ideas are very clear that we're trying to teach. And then lastly, the video should end with a call to action, you know, like, comment, subscribe, some way to draw engagement so that we get uh, promoted up on the platforms. So that's just the creative content checklist. When somebody's editing a video, you got to make sure you got to do that. Um, here's a cup. If you want to go a little bit more in depth, um, Chris wrote this part out where, you know, he wants to make sure that it inspires or informs, meaning that we're kind of blending the line between education and entertainment. And we want to make sure that education can be fun and very, very engaging. So that's where he's coming from. Um, when he's going universal, he's just saying that try not to talk too much to a very niche audience, but see if you can apply your concepts to a, a broader audience because that's how we're going to grow as a channel. Even though we focus mostly on the designers in the past couple of years, we're opening it up to creative entrepreneurs. So you'll see our audience grow as a result of that. Um, as we go down, you got to make sure that the video delivers. It's shareable. You know, what are some ways that this might go viral or or touch a, a nerve, a human nerve that might give somebody a compelling reason to share this with their audience. And then just a couple of best practices. And these are all notes from Chris Doe, who's the founder um, and the, the CEO of the future. So he wrote this. Uh, it's just more of an expanded version of my creative uh, content checklist here. That's really so that's smart. Just, yeah, that's just to make sure that the creative is on point. Then as we go down, there's the technical checklist. These are just like, here's how you name things. Here's how you save things. Never use, <laughs> never, ever, ever, ever use the term final or new anywhere because that's a rookie mistake. Anyone you're working with and they use new or final in their uh, file names, you know they are a noob because they haven't worked in teams before and that's just maddening. The way you're supposed to do it is have some kind of version number and version up because that's the best way to keep track of things. There's never something that's new and there's never something that's final. That's something that I've learned working as a creative professional for the past 15 years. I'm guilty of doing that. So that is a good <laughs> lesson for me. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Don't worry, we can, we can yeah, edit yeah. this part out. We can edit yeah. this part out. <laughs> You've got a just, gun under the table and you're going to get me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, and I only say that only because um, just from my experience, and I'm sure you've seen this before, if you're working with a client, and you work on something and you're like, okay, it's due uh, March 10th and you will deliver everything March 10th. And if you name it final, what's going to happen? Two weeks from now, they're going to call you and be like, oh, you know what? We noticed one little mistake. Can you make this update? What happens? Yeah. Is it final, 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 new? Like, what do you call it? So that's, that's where the mistake happens. But if everything is versioned and mm -hmm. the key takeaway here and the way we do this is that when we name something, when we name uh, a project, 
the way we normally do it is by year. So there's just a way to index that. So everything is in order from uh, oldest to newest. Um, the name of the content. So that's just the name of the project there. Uh, and then this version number right here. And you'll see that there's three spaces here. So I've actually worked on projects where the version numbers have gone up into the hundreds. That's how many iterations we've done. Wow. The key thing is here is these are the working files. These are the editing files, you know? So like, let's say this is a Premiere project. This is a Photoshop project, whatever it is. When you export that same project, it should follow the same uh, naming system. The reason why is when we export something and let's say we have to revisit that file weeks later, we need a way to track it back to the original file. We might have made 10 versions of the same thing. And then the client says, you know what? I like this second version. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have individual files saved up for all the versions, it's very hard to go back and find that thing. So that's why we use the system. That's why this is something that I've learned by getting punched in the face uh, on, on really crazy projects. And we've learned from our mistakes for it. So that's a gift I give to you and your audience is make sure you never use new, never use final, and try and have a very clear uh, titling system that you can track your files from um, all the way back to the raw files, the editing files. Very beneficial for everyone, <laughs> including yeah. myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's just a bunch of miscellaneous technical stuff here for, for videos, for audio, for music, where to save stuff, um, where you might find some resources and how we do our review uh, system. I really like the way you've gone about processes. Um, how have <laughs> you used the database side of stuff? Because um, that's like something that a lot of people struggle with when they get inside a notion, but once they master it, it's quite easy to go, isn't it, from there? Yeah, absolutely. We'll make sure that we're talking about the same thing. So the rest of the guidelines here, I mean, I don't want to go into each of it, but they're all pretty straightforward, you know, branding and fonts where you might find some of our templates on our Dropbox mm -hmm. um, release forms. So this is just guidelines for a lot of the content that we do. I want to move down a little bit. So there's a section here that's called gear. We're, we're starting this thing where, where we have so much camera gear where we're uh, checking stuff in and out and we just need to keep track of stuff. So that's what this section is. What you're talking about now is the database. So in this section right here, this is where we keep track of all of our to-dos and the current um, list of projects of things that are going on. So we have this thing called all projects. And if you look on here, this is a Kanban board. These are all the video projects that are going on at the future right now. Wow. So it's a lot. a lot. We have, <laughs> we, have we have a massive backlog of um, stuff going on here. And the way we have them organized is from the left, this is meaning it's uh, not started or barely started. And as you move over to the right, that's how things are getting completed. So sometimes we'll have a brainstorm or we'll record something and uh, it goes into this, starts in the not started pile. Then it goes into planning and writing once we do some pre-production. If we're doing some script writing in here, um, you know, we'll keep track of everything. And within these cards, we track who the editor is, who the director is, the shoot date, um, the rough cut date, the round two revision date, and then the, finally the air date. And you'll see some of these uh, become uh, available in the other views that we're going to look at. And then sometimes we'll just add comments here or descriptions um, and keep track of a lot of uh, any documents that are related to this. Then we go into shooting, which is here in this, this yellow column. So these are all the things that we're currently shooting. Um, done, meaning it's done getting shot and they're ready for an editor to pick it up. So one of our editors will take one of these guys and move the card over here. And so it goes into editing. So these are the current files that are being edited right now, current projects. And then once they're in the completed section, this is where I take over because I'm the one who's scheduling and mapping out where all of the videos go. Um, so I will move stuff over here into launch archive. The way I do this though is I actually go to um, the project here and then I go to air date and then I figure out where it is this is going to air, right? Like I pick a date. And once I pick that air date, it shows up here. If we go to this same information, we're gonna go to the calendar view. What you're going to see is this is what uh, March looks like for us. So you'll see the second half of March is a little spotty. But if I go back up to February, you can see this is our content schedule for February. So these are the, all the videos that came out. And then if you go back into January, 
you'll see all the videos that came out. So this is a great way for me as somebody who has to plan and release five pieces of content or more sometimes uh, on the channel. This is how we keep track of our content schedule and I can have visibility. So things are not releasing on the same days. Things are kind of spaced out and I can move stuff around in this uh, calendar view and I could see what's up upcoming if I know what's uh, on, on the schedule. Yeah, it's really, really smart. I like how you use the air date and the non-air date as well. As well. That's yeah. quite nice. That's really yeah, because sometimes we have different dates where we just need to review stuff or we just need to shoot stuff and it's not necessarily important for the calendar view here, right? So that's, it, yeah. uh, that's the thing that appears. It's just the air date so I could understand the, the scheduling. It's really great. And then the last view of this is just lists of projects. I really don't use this. Um, but this is just a good way to see the same exact information to see from a global view who's working on what. And obviously I can um, uh, sort by different people here. If I, if I want to look up what Mark is working on, what Ricky's working on, um, yeah. I, I could sort it through here. But I don't really use this list of projects. The most use is the Kanban and calendar for us so that we can keep track of uh, how things are moving along. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's, it, it, it's like you've got this like page where anyone can come into that is totally new to the team like you said like you're hiring new editors mm -hmm. they can come in and learn everything they need to know and that's a real magic of this page above a lot of other stuff isn't it is yeah you can just come in and let know all. that's Brilliant. what i love about notion is because like we can <laughs> keep track of projects we could train people in here we can host a lot of information um and it's so flexible so you know what we were just looking at is kind of like our bite size uh, content that g gets released those are pretty small those move very fast and don't need a lot of time and dedication where something where it's a long form project right now we're we're recording this series uh with uh this company called hamilton family brewery where we are currently rebranding their beer brewery and it's a long series we've been recording for about a year now so how do we keep track of one big massive project like that well we have a dedicated page for that if we go in here um, this is the for my Hamilton video team. If you go in here, you'll see this is a log of basically all of the major events that have happened throughout the process. So you'll see starting from July 31st last year up to January uh, 24th this year, we're just keeping track of um, what's the name of the footage, where mm -hmm. is that accessible, um, the date that it was shot, uh, any tags about what the content of the meeting might be or some of the footage we're going to see in there who's in the meeting here in this middle section, and then any particular notes about that footage so that, you know, since we're gonna edit, be editing this months and months later, there's a quick way to reference and find everything. And, and this is just our log of where everything is at. So it's very easy for us as a video editing team to come here and reflect back and remember what it is we captured that particular day. That's fantastic. It's yeah, really so good. That's, that's big. Um, and we map out a lot of the episode ideas here. Again, we use this for brainstorming sessions, how we write our content. Um, and how, how does, obviously, uh, Ben sold, right? <laughs> but how does everyone else get on with Notion? Do they find it fairly easy? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's always the hesitation at first, right? There's the ramp up period. When people first jump into Notion, they have the same exact reaction I do, which is, wow, that looks complicated. Mm. And that's, you know, and, <laughs> but the thing is we, as a company, as blind as the future, we've embraced change very drastically where we've seen our own company change massively um, over the years and change multiple times in terms of our identity, what we do, because we're responding to the market, we're responding to market forces. And we are also um, jumping on board with whatever Chris, the CEO, the visionary mm. sees as the future for us. So one thing that you'll know, so the future is about five years old now, but we're still very young. So mm. he's very much about, you know, just because we did something yesterday doesn't mean we have to do it the same exact way tomorrow. So he's constantly pushing us to try new things, trying to constantly improve because that's part of his personality is to learn new things, uh, teach it, and then learn a better way to do that same thing and keep recycling that process over and over and over again. So while somebody like me who likes to say super organized, that gets a little frustrating at times, uh, it, it forces us to just be very, very agile and move. So whenever we introduce new project management software like this, 
the team is very quick to, to move on board. If we say, hey, guys, we're all moving here. We've vetted it out. Me and Ben have used this for the past two weeks, and we think this is the future. We're going to move everybody over there very quickly and get off of our, all of our old habits and software that quickly. Yeah, yeah. And, and how long do you typically spend on a software in that period of time? Is it like maybe like th- three, f- three to six months on that particular piece of software? Obviously, the goal is to stay as long yeah. as possible, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Trello, we've been using for six or seven years. Mm. So that was something that because it did all of our project management, uh, you know, coupled with, uh, with uh, Google Docs, like that was very sufficient for our needs. And just mm. that Kanban feature was the, the biggest thing that helped, uh, helped us organize all of our big projects internally. So we used Trello for a very long time. Uh, we used Basecamp for a long time. I didn't use it. Chris was mainly the one using it, but a lot of our information was saved in there. I, I, I didn't like that at all. And then the other programs that we used, um, like Team Gantt, we used about for two years. I really like that because I don't think that there was many other uh, platforms out there that did Gantt calendars as clean as and as simple. Mm. Uh, so we used that for two years, but because we've shifted away from uh, a lot of the client service work that we do and we're focusing so much on the future and the video content, uh, we don't really need those types of tools because a lot of the stuff we produce is very short um, and, and Notion seems to do all of those things that we needed to do. Lovely. And do you have any tips um, to, the, for like newbie businesses setting everything up? Obviously, I think one of your tips there was definitely to, to make a, a, a wiki so that processes mm-hmm. are already set up when people come in. But is there anything else that you would say uh, small businesses or big businesses would be benefiting from? I would say that as much as possible, document your process. So as you guys are working on stuff, even if you're working on very different projects, a video project here, a branding project here, just take note, think about all the steps that you are working on and document that and see if that's something that's repeatable because the more you turn this into a process and make it more systematized, the more you're going to to save your time. So I think I would document as much as possible because that helps you understand how long something might take in the future, how to do it better in the future and look for ways to constantly improve. Um, Yeah, I think that would be my main thing. I I think in terms of Notion or any project management software, I think it's very key to get everybody on board. So I know it's not easy for much larger organizations to adopt to be as agile our team is only about 12 people we've we've been much bigger in the past with freelancers but our core team is only about 12 people and then we have freelancers jump in and out so with that we're still i think at a decent size where we can uh, be quite agile and move people around it'll be interesting to see what happens when we scale if all mm-hmm. of this is going to hold up and if this is going to get more chaotic or if this is going to maintain uh, the organization that we see in here, which I think is still a little disorganized, but um, you know, we're, we're constantly trying to improve and, and sort stuff out. Uh, so that would be, yeah, I think those are my, my two tips is just try and get everybody on board <laughs> using the, whatever software you're using. And the other thing is try and document, uh, systematize and, and make very clear processes to save you time. Well, that was really, really useful advice. And, and for myself, uh, actually, this tool was really useful because I can go and apply it to uh, some of the team stuff with, that we're just setting up. So this is fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. And of course, we were sold on Notion already. So <laughs> it's good news, right? <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Um, I love it. Ma- Matthew, where can everyone find you after uh, this video? Yeah, so if you want to find more uh, about me, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Matthew Encina. That's all one word. And MatthewEncina.com. If you're interested in learning more about the future and what we do, you can look up the future. Uh, that's the future without an E at the end. So F-U-T-R.com, the future.com, or on YouTube at The Future Is Here and our new channel, The Future Academy. Fantastic. Uh, I think people will thoroughly enjoy it. And and I wanted to mention as well, because I know you wait, but your YouTube channel, uh, the new one uh, that you've recently. Oh, yeah. So I started my own personal channel outside of uh, the future just to share more personal thoughts. I'm still figuring out the flavor there, but um, that's also um, at Matthew Encina. So you can find me on YouTube there. 
it's it's rather brilliant uh, and i was the same before I, I pretty much kitted out my uh, future home i think <laughs> <laughs> with a couple of i'm gonna steal a couple of things for sure but um, <laughs> it's been amazing having you on today matthew i really do appreciate you taking the time out so thank you yeah you're welcome this is really fun and i'm glad we could geek out about uh notion just because I, I love this tool i love tools and just trying to figure out best ways to find shortcuts for everything that we do every day 100 percent. yeah well thank you very much uh thank you to everyone who watched along today i'll include all the links in the description and i'll see everyone very soon cheers bye guys <laughs> <laughs>